is Jen. Welcome back to Bookish Blonde. Today we're going to talk about some flowers on covers. So I was just trying to think of a video idea and I thought, well, April showers bring May flowers. It's May. Um, and I had a dress on with flowers. I said, this is perfect. It's meant to be. So today I'm going to talk about six different books on my shelf. Some that I've read, um, two I've read and four I haven't read that have beautiful florals on the cover. So let's get started. Okay, the first one is one that I've read and I believe I gave this one four stars. Um, it's The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot by Marianne Cronin. So we got beautiful flowers there. And this book was, I can't remember where I heard about this, but you don't hear too much about it and I I loved it. We're following um, Lenny, who is a 17-year-old, and she has um, a terminal illness, so she's on a terminal ward, and she joins the hospital's um, art class. And there she meets Margot, who is an 83-year-old woman who is also terminally ill. Um, and so these ladies quickly become friends. They decide that they are going to come up with 100 art projects to kind of showcase their lives right because together they have lived a hundred years and that's where you get it the title um this one will pull on the heartstrings it it's obviously death can be a very hard topic to read about um but it was a beautiful story um, this story really gets you to think of how amazing it is that love and friendship transcend time um it makes you think about what you do with your short time here on earth and you know the legacy you leave behind um, and how important relationships are. Um, so this was a beautiful story. So that's The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot. That was a very strong recommendation from me. Um, the next one, I know I gave five stars because I just looked it up, and that is The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman. I've got the red poppies down here. I believe they're poppies. Maybe not. Red flowers, they're red. <laughs> um, and this book takes place obviously in Italy um, the setting the way it was written was just beautiful it kind of whisks you away I've never been to Italy so I guess I can't compare it to real life but I sure felt it felt real when I read it so she did a great job with that um, and this one we are following a 200 year old curse um, that one sister put on another sister saying that the second born sister will never find love so fast forward to present day um, Amelia, who's the second born sister, does not. She's single and happy and owns a bakery or works at a bakery and she doesn't believe it to be a curse. She just feels she hasn't found love yet and that's okay. Great Aunt Poppy calls Amelia and convinces her to go to Italy because Great Aunt Poppy is convinced that she will meet the love of her life on the steps of a cathedral on her 80th birthday and break the Fontana second daughter curse once and for all. Um, yeah, so you got sisters. You've heard it here before. I love books about sisters. Um, great Aunt Poppy was amazing. She was great. I loved her character too. Um, this was five stars. This was awesome. Okay, now the next four I've not read, but just in prepping for this video, it makes me really want to pick them up sooner rather than later. Um, so we have Before I Let You Go by Kelly Rimmer. Got some purple flowers there. And this one, um, Trigger warning for addiction. I know we have two sisters again. We have Lexi and we have Annie. Um, Lexi is the older sister. She has her life pretty much together. She's married um, and successful. Um, and she, Annie has a drug problem. And so Lexi has always bailed out Annie. Um, she kind of hasn't talked to her for a few years, kind of put her foot down with, I'm not going to bail you out and enable you anymore. So you have that in there. Um, but then one day Annie calls her She's in labor. She's afraid to go to the hospital because she's worried if she goes to the hospital, she will be arrested, maybe even go to jail. So the older sister, Lexi, takes her baby to, because mom has, I guess, probably lost right. So she's taking on her sister's baby. Um, I know the sisters had a traumatic childhood. We don't know what that is yet. Um, and this story is just about family secrets. What do you do to, to help family out? Um, and yeah, I heard this one is going to, again, pull on the heartstrings. So that is Before I Let You Go by Kelly Rimmer. All right, next one is Mad Honey. This is by Jodi Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan. Never read anything by her. Obviously, I've read Jodi Picoult before. Um, another purple flowers on the cover. Um, 
And this one, as I was reading to see, because I haven't read it, to remind myself what it was about, I really want to pick this up soon. So this, um, we're following Olivia. Um, she's living in Boston. She's married to a brilliant surgeon, and they have a son, Asher. Um, and everything's up. It says everything was upended when her husband revealed a darker side. So don't know what that is. Um, so she goes back to her sleepy New Hampshire town. She goes back into living the house she grew up in and helping her dad run their beekeeping business. The other main character we are following is Lily Campanello. And she and her mom relocate to the same place um, for her final year of high school. Um, and so both Lily and Olivia are both hoping this move will be a fresh start. Um, Olivia and Lily both start off pretty strong. The fresh start was what they needed. Um, their paths cross because Asher, who is Olivia's son, starts to fall in love with Lily, the other girl. Um, so we follow that. And then one day, Olivia receives a phone call. Lily is dead, and Asher is being questioned by the police. And that's all I want to read. So, yeah, Jodie McCoach is probably going to make me feel for both sides of the story somehow. Um, so, yeah, that's that's Mad Honey. All right, next one is, next two are actually thrillers. Um, this is The New Husband by DJ Palmer. If this looks familiar, it's because it's on my priority reads list for this year, so it will be read this year eventually. Um, this one I've had on my TBR forever, I feel. Um, but this one we're following Nina. Her husband Glenn goes missing, um, presumed dead, because it's been a year and a half and Glenn still hasn't shown up, right? Um, so she's just trying to put those pieces back together. She has a son as well. Um, and she meets Simon. Simon is a widower. His wife died. And they kind of come in contact somehow. And so they start giving love a second chance. Um, but is he too perfect? Is it more, is it too good to be true kind of thing? And some of her friends are starting to question maybe this new husband, this new man in her life, his motive. And is he more obsessive, controlling? So something like that. And this is going to be obviously a domestic thriller, which I really enjoy domestic thrillers most of the time. Once in a while, there'll be one that just I've, I feel like I've read before, but I love when I get a new domestic thriller that really just keeps me turning the pages. So looking forward to that. That is The New Husband. And then last but not least, this is something I probably will read, um, I'm hoping in June or July. You'll see why in a second. Um, Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This cover just screams Hawaii, screams summer. Um, and so yeah, I've been waiting. I've held on to this to read this summer because I didn't get to it last summer. Um, this one came out in, yeah, 2021. So it's been a couple years I've had this. I bought this right, right when it came out. Um, in this one, we have a secluded in the middle of nowhere island that has, it's known to be mysterious. Um, I don't know if it's haunted or murder took place, but this, this island has history. And these six young 20-something-year-old friends decide, they go on adventures together and everything, and so they decide to try out to go to this island um, and kind of explore and have a little getaway. So you're going to get a secluded mystery, um, probably like Agatha Christie, and then there were none style because we're on that secluded island. Um, this island is completely cut off from civil civilization, um, and... It says, one person goes missing and another one turns up dead. The remaining friends wonder what dark currents lie beneath this imp impenetrable paradise and who else will be swept under its secluded chaos. So this has sexy, sus sexy suspense, spine tingling, reimagining of Agatha Christie's classic. It says, reckless girls will wreck you. That's all I want to know. This sounds really good. So... There you have it. There are six books that I feel have some strong recommendations either from me or I've put them on my TBR because I've heard good things and they have flowers on the cover. So happy May, happy flowers. I'm gonna turn this around here. Oh boy, this is always so hard. All right, so here's those six books I just talked about. Um, hope you found something new to pick up. Maybe one of these intrigued you. Um, if you read any of these, um, leave your comments down below. Obviously, no spoilers, please. Uh, but I love chatting with you guys down there. Um, and that's all I have for you today. So 
Thanks again for watching and happy reading. See you guys in the next one. Bye.